almost every single one of us know someone who has some affiliation with a person who has a disability, whether physical, emotional, intellectual, or neurological. It could be us, a family member, or someone in our community. Autism is such a condition that affects the development of certain areas of the brain. But what exactly is autism? Autism, also called as autism spectrum disorder, is a developmental disorder characterized by persistent problems in social communication and interaction, along with restricted and repetitive patterns of behavior, interests, or activities. These types were once thought to be separate conditions. Now, they fell under the range of autism spectrum disorders, which include autistic disorder, Asperger's syndrome, and pervasive developmental disorder. As the word spectrum suggests, People with ASD may have challenges that run the gamut from mild to severe, with different levels of ability and disability, an autistic individual may have no functional speech or may have a rich vocabulary. They may be intellectually disabled or have an average or above average IQ. They may be socially withdrawn or may be socially active, although in an oblivious, eccentric way, or they may be fixated on lining up toys in a certain order, or have an encyclopedic knowledge of animals or another favorite topic. Now, you may be wondering, what causes autism? Exactly why autism happens isn't clear. It could stem from problems in parts of your brain that interfere with sensory input and process language. Autism runs in families, so certain combinations of genes may increase a child's risk. A child with an older parent has a higher risk of autism. Moreover, pregnant women who are exposed to certain drugs or chemicals like alcohol or anti-seizure medications are more likely to have autistic children. Other risk factors include maternal metabolic conditions such as diabetes and obesity. Now that we have scratched the surface of the issue of autism, how can we help to empower those with the condition? The answer to that is knowledge. While some people have shown a general awareness about autism, the lack of knowledge about the syndrome and its effects on those involved is really unfortunate. This lack of knowledge can end up excluding different individuals from our community without realizing it. Therefore, in order to better understand this condition and the people who suffer from it, we interviewed the National Autism Society of Malaysia and the families of autistic children. Okay, the first question is, what is the meaning of autism and what type of autism there is? Autism is a neurological disorder, which basically will affect how your brain processes information. That so so is represented in the behavior. For example, people with autism will have disability on social interaction, communication, and also the or restrictive behavior. Okay, thank you. Then the second question will be: How many people seek help from your organization yearly? But usually, uh, in a year, I will have we will have around hundred to hundred twenty uh, assessment cases that come to us to make confirmation whether it's autism or not. Okay, I see. So, what services do you provide for them? Uh, Nasom basically will provide all the services that are available in the market now, is including the assessment to determine whether you are autism or not. And we have early intervention, we have transition program for those who, re- who actually in the process of ready to go to school. And we have mainstream program, which uh, as a teacher aide will actually follow the student to go to radio- regular classroom. We have vocational, we have vocational training, and also we have a uh, hostel. And of course, we will be including a uh, therapy session, including uh, behavior therapy, uh, occupational therapy, art and drama therapy, and also block therapy. So basically, except then the job placement and job code services, we will have almost all the services available in the zone. That's great. So I will pass the question to Casey. Uh, thank you, Chailin. Good afternoon, I'm Casey. Uh, I would like to ask Miss Grace about three questions. Mm-hmm. First and foremost, do you create awareness for the public? Uh, the public awareness is actually doing continuously by many, many years from NASA. Uh, not just me. Uh, basically, I will do a lot of parents' education as well during consultation and also assessment. But um, 
in open public awareness. Nasom is doing a lot of event to gain a lot of uh, public awareness, and also we have a lot of uh, collaboration between organization and also private company to create awareness in between their companies or organization. Ah, okay. So the second question is, what is the most memorable incident that has happened? The most memorable, I think, is this is my first job. And also, I start with brute show together with all my colleagues, which means that I not start with sitting inside the office and doing assessment. I'm starting to do public awareness actually. So for the for the first few months, I actually run around Malaysia quite many state uh, to do public awareness instead of sitting inside the office. That's the most memorable moment. Oh, I see. So the last question is, how has MCO affected you? It's actually affected a lot of um, of my you know work now because um, we are not able we are restricted to not going out from home have to work from home, but a lot of time I can't actually work from home because uh, therapy session and also assessment session will be involved a lot of face to face conduct on on instead of having an online service, so it will create a lot of uh, pending cases. And also, it will actually indirectly will affect the effectiveness of the therapeutic value for my student who come regularly for therapy sessions. So it did uh, get a big impact on what uh, my work is. But uh, I also I think the whole MCO is actually more stressful for parents to handle because the kids at home. <laughs> okay, that's all for today. Thank you very much. Oh, okay. Hi, Mr. Hua, thank you for taking time to conduct this interview with us. I heard Berlin say before you have a brother who is an autism. So I will yeah. ask you some of your questions about autism. Yeah, sure, sure. Okay, the first question is, did your brother experience any discrimination for his disability? Yeah, sometimes, but most of the time it's still okay, yeah. Moving to the next question, what is the worst thing someone said to your brother about his disability? Uh, the worst thing that someone said about him is uh, he's not acting like a normal kid, like what normal kids should do. Like maybe, oh, for example, when we're eating, right? So we're eating fork and spoon and then we'll like take the food with spoon. But when he was a kid, sometimes maybe he'd get too excited and then uh, he, he, he tried to grab the food by his hand. So people in, beside him will think that, wow, why this kid like, is very rude and uh, not educated. And sometimes fa- having like family outing, we went to shopping. People were like, um, this kid is acting weirdly. It's not acting like a normal kid. Uh, some people may say he's like uh, a, bit, a bit crazy, uh, just running around and yeah, stuff like that. Like, yeah, basically something at the end. Uh, and they might say, us, we are not educating him well because uh, we didn't teach him proper manner. But in the fact is he actually, he can't really adapt to normal people like that fast. So it takes time to train him. But People will think that people, uh, the kid same age as him should behave this way, but he's a bit slow, so yeah, people say bad things about him. I see. Do your brother feel less of a prison because of his condition? No, he actually does not, does not, because he don't really care about what people think of him, because uh, he's just living his own world. The good thing about him is he still keep doing his thing, despite of like caring what people talk. So I think that's what makes him special from the other kids because maybe like same the like kids same age as him, people uh they, they start to develop the feelings that oh they might start to uh think of what people thought of them, then they'll start to behave well. But my brother he just do like what he wanna do. And yeah, that's what makes him special, right? So I'll pass the question to Fei Jing to ask. Okay. I'll be continue to ask the question. What about disabilities do your brother want to convey to the public? Mostly is like disabilities of like understanding what normal people do. Like maybe we can understand about how money works, but they, they don't. Yeah, something like that. So what is the one thing that keep you motivated to take care of him? Uh, okay, so first thing is because uh, he's my brother, so I have the responsibility and obligated to take care of him. Uh, second thing is, um, I think because uh, I think that Actually, autism, this thing is it's not really special anymore. It's quite common these days. So I think that I, if by taking care of my brother uh, in a better person can unintentionally, like, not I mean, like, indirectly mo- motivate like, other kids that have autism uh, siblings in their family to 
uh, take care of their autism siblings, just like the way I did. Because many kids like me, they might not know how to manage the how to manage their autism siblings well. Because uh, this kind of autism thing is kind of it's like a long term thing. It will follow you like forever. So, what motivates me is I think that I obligated to take care of him, and then I want to show a good example to others as well that if I can take care of this autism. I think so other people can too as well. So how has MCO affected you and your brother's life? Uh, so when MCO started, we are still okay with it. But when it comes to like a period of time, right? Because everyone stay in house, you can't get anywhere else. And then my brother sometimes, uh, he has the demand to going outside because we usually uh, bring him outside to like have a walk to like chill himself out. But due to MCO, we can't do anything except staying at home. So it's kind of... It's kind of a trouble for us because we can't tell him that oh there's this virus thing going out there we cannot bring you go out so he will thought that we I like literally don't let him go out so it's kind of hard to explain to him so that's that's the thing that affect to us and it's yeah basically yeah it's kind of hard to bring him go out but overall it's still okay because it's like a home kind of stay at home guy because he don't really go out often he more prefer to stay indoor so when sometimes he 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 can't go out he will show like tan tantrum to us and. We can't really do anything about it, but just to let his anger out because, yeah, due to MCO, we can't go anywhere. Yeah. Last question is, do you think you are a good brother in taking care of your siblings? Uh, I can't say I'm very good, but I think my mom would be the best person that uh, taking care of him. Uh, maybe I'm just like, uh, uh, I'm more like good, but not the best. Uh. My best would be my mom, yeah. Uh, okay, thank you. Thank you. According to research, it is reasonably certain that at least 20 of every 10,000 individuals and about 1 in 59 children have ASD. Despite these staggering statistics and an increasing number of people affected by autism, there is still so much stigma of this condition. There are many who view autism as a source of disappointment, annoyance, shame or worse. This leads to some autistics feeling as if they have to hide their condition and their true selves in order to be accepted by society. This is not how it should be. We have to accept those who are different from us as they have feelings just like anybody else. People with autism are often isolated from the crowd like distant stars. However, they still desire our understanding, attention, respect and acceptance. They should be treated with the gentleness of the world just like normal people. People with autism are not out of reach. They live around us alive. Hence, what can we do for them? If you have a role as a teacher, you can number one, use visual strategies to match students' strong response and understanding of visual information. Number two, establish an organized and regular learning environment as soon as possible. Number three, assist students to establish appropriate and effective communication skills as soon as possible. Number four, response students with autism will be obsessed with some specific themes and take homoapathic guidance as the motivation for learning. Number five, provide a favorable learning environment to reduce students' influence on learning due to noise, glare, and high room temperature. Lastly, use multiple sensory assistance. Students learn to avoid a long series of oral instructions. If you have a role as a parent, you can, number one, depend the understanding of the truth about autism, know yourself, and the enemy and win all battles. Number two, establish belief and firmly believe that children will be better than they are now after being trained. Number three, take a positive attitude and face the challenge of nurturing children. Number four, affirm the children's strengths and their strengths and explore and cultivate their special talents so that they can do their best to contribute to society. Number five, close cooperation with schools and other professionals. Number six, establish a support network to strive for understanding from family members, support from relatives and friends, and support from community members as well. If you have no direct connection to an autistic person but still wants to make a change, you can, number one, deepen the understanding of autism, understand and support the difficulties and challenges faced by parents of children with autism, and avoid blaming parents for misunderstanding. Number two, Accept and respect people with autism and don't discriminate or tease them. Number three, provide opportunities for people with autism to integrate into society so that they can contact and communicate with others. 
and overcome the obstacles caused by autism and difficulties in community adaption. Now, in a nutshell, it is the basic human right of all individuals and children to be free from discrimination and lack of opportunity because of their disability. Let's be curious, but never indifferent. Let's have the courage to look each other in the eye because by looking, we can open a whole world to someone else.